Hello my friends all over the world. William Poloniak here again from Whole Health Foundation. Today I'm making juice with carrots, the leaves from a kohlrabi plant. A kohlrabi is a, a beet type plant or a turnip type plant that has many leaves and the root growing above ground. I'm going to juice just the leaves with a number of other ingredients. In addition to my carrots and kohlrabi leaves, I'm putting in one whole Swiss chard plant, a whole bag of Swiss chard leaves, about 50 grams of turmeric, one whole garlic head, and 130 grams of ginger, plus a couple of dandelion plants, and one whole um, celery plant. So let's start making juice. Before I start making juice, I want to point out that I'm using the front-loading feed tube. The front-loading feed tube eliminates blowback 100%. You will never have blowback up to your ceiling. And I'm using the near-zero blowback cutter that has over 80 teeth in it. It not only shreds produce better, but it does so 4 degrees centigrade cooler. So let's put the cutter on. And then the feed tube, and I'm going to plug in the thermometer here on the left side, and then feed in three or four ice cubes to cool down the cutter and the feed tube because here in California we're up to 23 degrees uh, centigrade. You can go as high as 35, but I like to keep mine under 20. So the first thing I'm going to do is feed through some French sorrel. Look how that cutter cuts through that French sorrel, just like a hot knife going through butter. Next I'm going to put through a couple of kohlrabi leaves. I'll bend that in half and hold it into a tube and put the stem end in first. We're down to 14 degrees centigrade. Rotate my ball, let's put in a little more French sorrel this time. So you have to go very slowly through. Now greens are very, very fibrous, so I'm going to clean my grid. And ginger is very fibrous as well and put the grid holder up here and clean with a knife both sides of the grid. And I want to point out that I'm using the J grid, J for juice. It has larger holes for greens. Now I'm going to continue with my greens. More French sorrel. For the celery plant, I'll put about half of that celery plant in. Celery is very, very fibrous. I'm going to put in my dandelion plant. I'm going to cut the root off because there's a lot of dirt in the roots. So I'll put the dandelion leaves in next. some ice cubes because we're about 20 again. It's very important to put 
the ice through slowly. You want the cold to transfer to the cutter and the feed tube, not just ship, uh, shoot all the way through. continue with my greens. Uh, here's the last of my greens and I'm going to follow that by carrots. Put a couple of ice cubes through before I do some carrots. carrots through. It's a good idea when you have carrots put the big end to the small end. You might get two or three ends at a time. Oh, these are too big. Now, after I put two carrots through, I'm going to change to the number two grid. Clean the J grid which has three sixteenth inch holes. And this is better for greens, does a better job. The number two grid, which is one eighth inch holes, does a better job on carrots and root crops. So we'll continue with carrots. Sometimes you can put two in if you put in the small end to the big end. Continue with carrots, large end in first. It's always best to use two hands to push, it's better for your posture. More ice cubes, wings are above 20 again. And like I said, you can go up to 35, but I like to keep it below 20. Now here's the last of my carrots. Put a couple ice cubes in there. Now I have to use a flashlight so you can see in there. You can probably see the cutter. But you can see that there's no plug of carrot in there and everything is shred properly. Now the next step is to unplug the thermometer, remove the feed tube, and then we're going to clean the carrot off the cutter. And then get the rest of the pulp out of the feed tube. I need a longer knife. Let's see. Yes, this one will do. So with this cleaning brush, I'm going to clean all my parts. And every juicer sold by Whole Health Foundation comes with this cleaning brush. It's a perfect size to fit inside the feed tube and the perfect size to clean everything else. And clean the cutter, clean away from you. And with the cutter, Make sure, I'm going to have to get a knife to do this. With the cutter, make sure that the plug of produce in the end uh, set screw and the side set screws are removed. You don't want to leave any pulp on there. So clean away from you. And we'll put this up on top of the juicer. Clean the inside of the feed tube and everywhere else you can think of cleaning it. Now to clean the front, I put the sponge down there to catch some water, and then up on the left and down on the right. The reason you go up on the left and down on the right is you're unscrewing the wing nuts, so you're not tightening it. And then with a damp rag, or if you have, if you don't have a damp cloth, take a spray nozzle from your sink and wash it down, and then we'll reassemble and continue. Now the cutter always goes down on the top with the hole down for drainage. Never, and I mean never, leave it on the shaft of the motor. The next step is obvious. You mix the carrot pulp with the greens. And I have so much carrot here, I have to be very, very careful to get a good mix and make sure that it doesn't overflow. And it's usually a good idea to ro rotate the bowl in both directions. 
when it's overfilling like this you have to be very very careful now I think that's good enough and the next thing the next thing is to get a folding container and take the cloths out of the freezer and crack the ice so they'll come apart a little bit easier There's six cloths here and I'm going to demonstrate my six cloth less work method. We're done unfolding the frozen cloths. We'll put them in the collection container. Pull it forward so your cloths are overhanging, not touching the countertop and enough space here for folding. So we'll get a collection jar for the juice. We'll put our juice tray in and we'll start folding cloths to make juice and we'll put three large scoops in each cloth. That's about a cup and a half, maybe a cup if you use smaller scoops. And we're going to press two scoops full or two cloths full of pulp at one time. When you use two cloths you get better pressure and more juice. So we'll pull those into as tight a package as we can make. Again, I'm going to show you my six cloth less work method. I'll fold that into a nice tight package, pull it in tightly, fold it in thirds just like the cloths came in the package. Now two cloths full into the press, centered left to right, this is very important, centered front to back, all the way back, back it off a little bit. Now the reason you back it off is you don't want this to go up too fast. If it goes up too fast, it's going to slip. So let's put three scoops and continue. And again, nice tight package, set it aside. Continue folding sets of cloths. Now when you're on your last cloth, advance that all the way. And here goes my six cloth less work method. This goes forward, this goes over, the spent cloths go on top, and we continue in that same rhythm until we're done with all the pulp. Two cloths in the press, centered left to right, centered front to back, adjust if need be, all the way back, back it off a little bit. Now here's a little tip, never, and I mean never throw away your pulp. I'm going to show you later how we can get at least 10% more juice. Now I'm gonna put two scoops on here, Later it'll be one scoop because our patty is getting thicker and thicker. So we'll flatten that, set it aside. And again, do not throw away your pulp. We'll put two scoops on here. Later we'll put one scoop because the patty at the bottom is getting thicker and thicker. And when you're on your last cloth, advance that all the way. Uh, here's the six cloth, less work method again. This goes forward, that goes over, the spent cloths go on top. And we continue in the same rhythm until we're done. Centered, left to right, centered front to back, adjusted if need be, it has to be right in the center, all the way back and back it off. And we'll continue until we're done. All the way back, back it off. You have to be very careful because the bowl is almost full. So we'll keep our eye on that bowl. And again, two more scoops. It looks like that bowl might overflow. So I'll dance that a little bit more. Yeah, I'm gonna have to back that off because I don't want that to overflow. That would be a real mess. So let's continue folding these last two cloths full of pulp. And again, let's shut that off. You never throw away this pulp because it is getting thicker and thicker, that bottom patty that is. So two scoops on top, pull it into a tight package, the tighter the better. Now because my bowl is full we'll have to put that into bottles, but here's the six cloth less work method. This goes over, forward, this goes over. Now these are not fully pressed so I'm going to put the press plate back, but a lot. I want that to be very, very obvious. If you don't put it back a lot, like just a little bit, you'll damage your tray and believe me, you will forget. 
because you're in the process of doing this. It's very easy to forget. So all the way back and let's fill some bottles. And I'm going to fill these from the back side so that the camera gets a good angle. Normally I would fill it from the front. And I'm filling it leaving about 10% for filtered or distilled water. And I do that because the juice is very, very rich. And especially for a diabetic, you wouldn't want to have too much sugar in your system. And we'll continue filling bottles until we're done. Five and a little bit in the sixth bottle. So let's make more juice. Now to make more juice, we'll pull the tray forward, get it on there properly, make sure these are right in the center. All the way back, back it off, turn on the machine. There's no need to wait for every last drop because we have more cloths full of pulp, so we'll continue with two more cloths full of the press. Centered left to right, centered front to back, all the way back, back it off a little bit. Now I'm going to start putting one large scoop, not two, because this patty is already very, very thick. So one huge scoop, maybe one and a third. You can pretty well eyeball it, but one scoop generally, once the patty is very, very thick. And we'll flatten. Now that's about the size of what you want your patty to look like. Larger than that, it's too much. So on to the last cloth. Again, one large scoop. That's that all the way. Notice my uh, collection bowl is very, very full, so I'm not going to press this all the way. I'm going to set it back as I did before. And um, let me just uh, put one scoop on there and get these folded before I pour more bottles of juice. And this patty is getting very, very thick. Almost too thick. That was before I'm filling these from the back side because I'm going to add distilled water. And as I've said in other videos, you can add bottled water or even tap water if you have a good palatable tap water system. And we'll continue filling these bottles and then we'll make more juice. Put two more cloths full of pulp into the press. Centered left to right. Centered front to back. Adjust if need be all the way back. Back it off a little bit. Now instead of a full scoop, this patty is very thick, I'm going to put just a half a scoop in here. Set that aside. Advance that all the way. And again, just a half a scoop. Well, let's risk it. Let's put this whole thing on there and hope that it's not too thick. Now I'm going to get a spatula to get the rest of that pulp out. make that noise and then we'll fold these again now with the spent pulp I'm going to show you how to get 10% more juice this goes forward that goes over the spent pulp goes on top two more cloths into the press again centered you can see it's a very tight fit because of all that pulp centered left to right Centered front to back, make any adjustments you need to all the way back, back it off. Now what I'm going to do with the spent pulp is I'm going to fold it into a very tight ball. And I'm going to show you how we get 10% and sometimes more than 10% extra juice by not discarding this, but repackaging it and pressing it. So I'm going to use a special folding technique of folding this under like I'm doing now. And I'll do that in both directions and make as tight a package as I can 
by forming the spent pulp into a ball. Let's tuck that under a little better. And set it aside. Advance that all the way. And I'm going to continue folding all of the spent packages into a tight ball. See that I have three double packets of uh, already spent pulp repackaged. And what I'm going to do is take a measuring beaker from up above on my shelves and we're going to press this to see how much extra juice we'll get by repackaging the spent pulp. Now I remind you, this is pulp that almost everyone would throw away and they throw it away because nobody tells you, like I'm telling you, that you can repackage it into a tighter package and uh, repress it and get about 10% more juice. and. That 10% in the last pressing has the most important micronutrients. So we'll package it in the tray, centered left to right, centered front to back, that's very important, all the way back, back it off a little, and let's see how much more juice we're going to get in this session. Now as soon as we get juice flow, advance that all the way and keep your eye on this container. Well there's two ounces so far. Now we're using a Whole Health Foundation model juicer that has a solid bottom plate and other premium parts on the interior workings. So you can actually leave this up all day if you wanted to. Now if you have a Norwalk juicer, you can upgrade your juicer to be as good as a Whole Health Foundation model because the parts are identical and interchangeable. Now we've got full advance out all the way. Remember, don't take your eyes off this container, it'll spill all over your counter. And while that's pressing, I'm going to form the rest of these already pressed cloths into a tighter ball and we'll press them again. Now we've got droplets, so we'll put in a second packet of repackaged, second time repackaged pulp. Oh, that's a tight fit. All right, right in the center, left to right, front to back, all the way back, back it off. 16 ounces so far. As soon as I get juice full, we'll advance that all the way. Very important to keep your eye on this container. Now there's 18 ounces, approaching 19. Oh, that's going to overflow, so what I'm going to do is stop it here. that back a little bit so it doesn't drip in my counter and then we'll continue pressing that make sure it's on the tray properly all the way back 10 ounces so far just for fun I'm going to put another cloth on top Let's see if any more juice comes out of that. All the way back, back it off a little. A little over 10 ounces. Probably 10 and a half. There's 15 bottles and enough for a taste test. Now what I'm going to do next is top these bottles off with distilled water. Now I'm topping off all the bottles with distilled water just until they overflow. Now I'm going to cap them off. And then we'll do a taste test and put them in the refrigerator. Alright, the next to the last step is to scrub any pulp off of the cloths, refold them in thirds like they came in the package, then press the water out. So that's my next to the last step and when we're done with this we'll do a taste test. Fold them into thirds, just as they came in the package. Put those in the press. I'm going to put a sponge down here to catch the water all the way back. Since you put them in the freezer and you want to be able to take them apart, if you didn't uh, press the water out, it would be like a block of ice. And believe me, you would never get it apart. You'd have to let it thaw for about 20-30 minutes. That should be enough. 
and we'll put these into a plastic bag and then into the freezer. As you can see my friends I have 5, 10, 15 bottles of juice enough for a taste test and reminding you two of these bottles perhaps two and a third came from pressing the already spent pulp that most people would throw away. So we've got 15 bottles let's do a taste test. Here's another taste test. Oh, this is delicious. I wish you could taste it. Well, my friends, if you'd like to call me, either to buy a juicer, supplies, or parts, or even get advice, my phone number is 760-753-0321. My email address is developtrust.cox.net, and my webpage is wholehealthbound.com. But if you'd like to buy a juicer or get supplies, give me a call. See you in the next video.